Hi, it's Anna Haferman. Today I want to show this uh, poncho that I made on the LK150. It's kind of a summery poncho made in a cotton bamboo blend, but you could make it in a wool for winter. Um, it's a pretty simple project, but I added some techniques, including a really easy cast on and cast off that looks nice, and a chain edge that you do as you go that makes the edge a lot nicer than normal knit. So um, you can wear this several ways. You can wear it with the stripe diagonally or up and down or with the stripe across the front with the stripe across the back. Before I get into it, I wanna thank all my channel members, uh, my buy me a coffee people, my YouTube super thankers, and everyone who has supported my channel through liking and commenting and making my projects. I really appreciate your support, so thank you. The yarn I'm using is this Bamboo Fair from Premier. It's a DK weight yarn, so it's a number three, and it's 60% rayon and 40% cotton. It's 100 grams, so I'll need three of my main color and one contrast color. This one's called Indigo. So I've got some waste yarn threaded, and I want that to be in a contrasting, a very contrasting color to my main yarn. Um, so that's a very good contrast. And I want to set my carriage to tension six. Now my main... Uh, Main tension for this is going to be four, so I'm going up two for this. Um, and you'll see why when we make it up at the end. So I'm going to select from And then I'm going to push every other needle back. And this is just going to, I'm just going to cast on with the comb. So, there we go. So, now I'm going to thread the waste yarn. And this is just your typical uh, cast on, comb, cast on. So, I'm going to knit one row. Then I'll hang the comb and um, I like to hang it this way with the prongs facing me because I feel like it stays on a lot better that way. So, and I want to make sure that's okay. Then um, hang weight. So, so I'm gonna put one on each on each comb, and that will be enough for now. So um, then I'll pull out every uh, all the needles I push back, and now. Remember to pick up that one because that got pushed back the last time. And for this, it wouldn't be that important if you didn't. But for a lot of things that are in pattern or whatever, you might you might mess up if you forgot to pick that one back up. So then I just knit another row. And now I'm just going to do about eight or ten rows of waist yarn. So my waist yarn has rolled off the table a couple times, so I'm going to put it in this bowl to keep it just from rolling around. Um, and if I have this new setup. I've got this keto cabinet and um, have it pulled away from the wall a little bit so that it, so 
so I can get to the plug back there. I have a 970 in there. Anyway. Okay, so. So I'm done with my waste yarn, so I'm just going to cut it. So I'm starting with the main yarn, and I want a long tail so I can finish with it. So uh, I'll just the long tail and then thread that yarn. Now I'm going to reset my row counter to zero. And I'm going to knit my first row at tension six, which is what the carriage is in already. And that's my first row. Now, for the next rows and every other row after that, I'm going to go down to tension four. And I don't know if you could see that, but I'm on tension four. Okay, so now we're going to start doing the... Um, the pattern and it's basically stockinette but we're just going to do uh, an edge stitch that will give it a nice um, a nice finish so I'm going to put the carriage in hold and then okay so then I'm going to pull this last needle to hold you see that it's hard to get everything on screen but there we go so i've got that one in hold so i knit the row and it held this needle so i'm going to wrap the yarn went over the needle which is what it does when it's in hold and so i'm going to wrap that just push the yarn under the needle and then push the um that needle back to upper working position and then over here i'm going to hold this needle so um what that will do is it will knit this one and then hold the one on the other side so it's going to knit that one in And over here that one held so then I'll push I'll wrap that one push that back and then this is my routine I'll wrap this one push it back go over here pull that needle to hold so now it will knit this one in because I push it back to upper work and it will hold that one so I'm just going to keep doing that So you wrap that one, push it back, and hold hold that one. So I'm always wrapping and pushing back on the carriage side, holding on the other side. So I, when I did this, I just was going wrap, push back, hold, wrap, push it back, hold, and just kind of repeating it to myself. Um, and that way I didn't, I could kind of keep track of what I was doing. So wrap, push it back, hold the one on the other side and knit. So you see what happens is I'm getting this long, uh, I'm getting this double length, um, stitch on this side and this is like when in hand knitting when you slip the first stitch it's kind of the same edge and you see this is what it normally looks like when you just knit 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 and then you see it has this kind of chain effect on that side um, and because we're not finishing the edge of this we're going to steam it out and that edge hopefully will lie pretty flat and just give it a nice kind of a better edge than just the typical knit one and because it's holding every other row it's basically it's only knitting every other row so it's making that long stitch uh, for every two rows so I'm just gonna keep doing that
wrap, push it back and hold. Wrap, push it back, go over here and hold that one. So I'm gonna do 40 rows of the white and then I'll switch to blue. So I'll come back when I'm at 40. Okay, so I've got 40 rows. So I'm over on this side and I'm gonna switch to the blue yarn. So I'm going to uh, wrap this still, push back and pull the last one to hold. Uh, cut this yarn and then thread the blue yarn. Okay, so we're starting with the blue yarn and we're just gonna imagine that this is going, well, this actually is going to be a continuation. So I wrapped it, so then the blue's gonna take over <clears throat> and that will keep the chain stitch going. So, um, you always want to weight down each thread, each piece of, each end of yarn. Uh, you can hold it, but if you, um, if you wrap it, uh, if you weight it down, it gives you a lot more control because you have, you don't have to hold it and do whatever you're trying to do. So I'm ready to go because I wrapped it, pushed it back, uh, pulled the last one to hold again and then I'm just gonna so my video cut off but what I was saying is um, I'm gonna knit 40 rows of blue and I tied those two yarns together um, I always want to add my yarn on the right because I'm gonna seam this is gonna be the shoulder seam on this side and so if I always add them on the right these tails are going to end up in the seam rather than at the bottom of the garment where they won't be as it won't look as nice so this way it'll be in the seam and you won't have to worry about what that looks like so we just keep going till 40. okay so i've got my 40 rows of blue and now i'm going to cut the blue and remember i'm going to wrap it so basically put it under and then I'm going to put the blue away because I won't need it for a while. So I just put it away so it doesn't end up tangling up with anything. And then I'll just add the white. Now we're going to do, we're going to keep going and do 226 rows of white. And I'm just going to stay, stay in the pattern that, that we were doing. And so I wrapped the blue because it's really going to be the white now on the next one. And I held the last needle just like I've been doing the whole time. And then I'm going to do 226 rows. So, so I actually did only 224 rows because I was getting a little concerned that I was might not have enough white yarn so we'll see and now i'm going to add this blue over here and i've already got it ready i've pushed that back and pulled the other one out and i'm going to do 40 rows Okay, so I joined the white, uh, or, or I started the right. This is all I have left. So um, I'm hoping I have enough. <laughs> and we're going to play, be playing yarn chicken on video. So I'm going to push that one back, pull the other one. And because I don't have a lot left, I'm gonna. I really don't want a long tail. I don't want to waste any go uh, actually 39 rows and then the last row is going to be slightly different
Okay, so I've done 39 rows of white. Um, so I was at 40 with the blue and 39, so that's why it says 79. So the last row, and this is how much yarn I have left. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen. And I also want to put my carriage back to six because I want this last row to be bigger, just like the first row was. And um, this, I actually pulled it from force of habit, but you don't need to hold that last one. So let's see how it goes. <laughs> um, did not work out exactly how I calculated. So let's go. This is our last row. And we're halfway there. So after that last dramatic row, I switched to waist yarn. I'm still on tension six, and I'm just doing about eight or ten rows with waist yarn. So then we'll just knit across and take it off the machine. So here it is off the machine, and um, I made it, which uh, of course did not end up getting on camera. The camera shut off right before it happened. So this is how much yarn I ended up with, and um, that's why I went down to 224 rows in the middle, because I was actually had weighed how much blue I had left and how much white, and figured I uh, better cut down a couple rows but that worked just fine um I had this much blue left um I did a tension square with this so it would have been more if had I not done that and then with the white I really had like that much left so it was cutting it close with the three ivory and one indigo but it worked so what I'm going to do here now is finish the ends and each end has a row that's uh bigger Remember we did those at tension six for the first and last row. So I'm gonna go to either end, cause I'm gonna do this the same, find the tail on whichever end I'm working on. So here's the white tail. I'm gonna go to the other side of that and find the first stitch. So there's my first stitch right there. And then I'm gonna take my latch hook and I'm actually going to use the smaller end because I think it'll work a little better. And um, I'm going to go in, find these white stitches. And the reason I made them bigger is because I want, I'm going to do a latch, uh, a loop through loop cast off, but off of waist yarn. So I want this to be uh, not tight and, you know, so it's wide enough that it doesn't pucker. So what I'm going to do is go in with my small end go in there and pick up that first loop and get it behind the latch. So it's behind the latch, so here's the latch, here's the latch, and so it's behind it. And then I'm gonna go to the next one, the next white one, and get it in the hook. So then I'll pull the one in the hook through the other one and then put that one behind the latch. Then I'll go to the next one and get in there and do the same thing. The next one and do the same thing. So that I'm just gonna keep doing that. And this is why I cast on with the waist yarn and then the um, row at the higher tension. And um, I find this to be easier than uh, latching from the needle bed and um, you may like doing it that way, in which case you certainly can. I find this way, I don't have to sit at the machine to do this. I can sit wherever I want and um, I can, uh, it also gives me a nice tension. So I'm just gonna do this whole row. Now, if you like my videos, please, uh, like and subscribe on YouTube and um, if you click the little bell it will um, send you notifications when I upload a new video and um, 
I appreciate all your support. The uh, buy me a coffee, the YouTube super thanks, the uh, channel members, and uh, everyone who likes and comments and shares and makes comments. Uh, I said that already, but um, I appreciate it. It really does help me to grow and make more videos, so I appreciate it. So I'm just going to keep doing this. It really goes pretty fast. Okay, so here's my last one is right here. So I'm going to pull that through. And then I've got my last one. Um, now what I want to do, so that's my last stitch, I'm going to grab the tail and pull that all the way through and then just pull it a little tight and that's the edge and it might seem a little tight right now but once we remove the waste yarn it's you'll see it will uh, be the right tension so then again on the other side i'm going to find my tail which is let's begin okay there it is so this is the other side, and here's the tail on this side. So I want to go over to this side and start here. There we go. I just kind of tighten it up a little. And it does seem really tight at this point, uh, but we're going to take the waste yarn off. Now this, let's see, let's start over here. So this is the, um, this was where we started. And so, or no, this is where we ended. So that was the last row we knit. And this one will just unravel. Um, this one you can just unravel. It'll easily unravel. So you can do that one that way. And, um, the other one is not as easy to unravel because it's where we began and just the way the knitting is, it's not going to unravel that way. All right, so I've got to my last one and it might hook there, but that's okay because you're, you can just pull it. Okay, so there, there we go. And just to make that easy, I'm going to un just cut that so it comes out okay so that's our edge and see how it's nice and uh, it's firm but it's not pulling in and once I block this this is gonna lay down much flatter so that's our edge and it's really important not to miss a stitch uh, when you're looping together because if you do, it, the whole it will start raveling. So you don't want to do that. Then we go to this other side, and on this side, the waste yarn um, it doesn't unravel because we did the cast on where we had that uh, yarn going across. So what I'm going to do, the tails over here. I'm going to go to this side and just cut my last stitch. Make sure not to cut any of your project yarn, which is the white or the blue. Cut that red one. Just cut it off. Then go to the other side and there's your tail and just start pulling. And if it's giving you trouble, you can make some little snips along the way, but it should pull out. Well, mine didn't, but... Um, so there's... It's starting, but... And another thing you can do is just go in. And again, we're not cutting any white yarn. It's just cut one of those. a couple of these red ones along the way and that way you don't have to pull such a long piece out which didn't really want to work so um 
So see that came out really easy. That was pretty easy. And over here. There we go. So here it is after blocking it. It's folded in half so I can get it in the frame. Um, the fabric is really nice and soft and drapey. Um, I think the rayon gives it a nice drape and the cotton makes it feel really good. The whole thing is just very nice. This is how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to take this yarn from the bottom one and uh, thread that. Okay, and then I'm going to go over here and just see that chain right there. I'm going to go right in there. Um, so I'm going to come back and go in the first chain here. Okay, so now I'll go up here and I want to pick up one strand. I'm going to go into the, it's this, uh, you see where the chain is. I'm going to go into these holes, but I'm only going to pick up the first thread that goes across. Now notice there's two that go across because we held one stitch and they're pretty close together. So just get that first one. There it is. Get that first one on the top. And then that just wants to be my way no matter what. Okay, and then go down to the bottom and get the first thread you can find and let's see is there only one yeah there's only one pick that up okay, so then go to the other side and pick up we're going to go into where we this where we just came out of and we're going in there and it's between those two little stitches I'm going to go in there. And then come back here and go in where we came out. It can be a little difficult to see at this point, but it's right right there. And then I'm just going to pick up one of these. So these kind of clump together. Just get one. And this is going to make kind of a stronger uh, seam so it's not going to pull as much. So then I'll go over here and pick up one there and just keep picking up one bar each time. I want to come down here. There should be one more white one for me to get. Okay, so uh, the other thing I'm going to do, which I don't normally do, but since this seam is going to have a little bit of, uh, if it's hanging sideways, it's going to pull a little bit. So I'm going to um, do, I'm going to sew up the blue with blue so that when it pulls open, you don't see the white stitches if it pulls open some. So I'm going to go here and the first one of these I made with a, a wool and I was able to just match your stitch picking up those and then those on there. So it um, and it was fine, but this fabric just seems to be a little more um, just a little, I don't know, maybe because it's cotton, it's doing that. I don't know. Um, so anyway, then the next one, like so, let's see, we want to go back, let's see where we were, back in where we came from. So I'm actually going to come 
around here and just pick up that blue stitch and then I'm going to tie the blue to the white when I'm done. So I just did that blue, that one blue stitch. And then if I come over here, I should be able to find one blue stitch. two stuck together. I get one. Just one at a time. In this way, if it pulls a little, you're not going to notice the there won't be an obvious white obvious white stitches in there. So I'm just going to start with another um, length of wh white. And then I'm going to go um, I'm going to go to 12 about 12 inches I made uh, I did this before and I did 13 and I decided I didn't really like uh, it seemed a little too wide on me so 12 is about there so you can as you're getting further along, you can try it on and see if you like where your neckline is ending. So uh, about 12 inches here. Then I just sort of went around with that thread that I haven't wove in yet. And then I tied, um, it's hard to see, but I tied the end of the white I was seaming with to the blue I was seaming with. So thank you. And let me know if you have any questions.